Hey, it's Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's uh, and Joe Glines from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, that's great. So today we're going to be talking about these 10 tips uh, that we wish we had known before we started coding. Uh, so those tips can be all kinds of stuff. But one thing is, don't try to learn everything at once. That to me is a great tip because when you sit down, maybe if you haven't done any type of coding before, um, you would love to just know way more than you actually need for whatever task that you have at hand. So if you're trying to learn it all at once, you'll probably end up not learning exactly what you need. Yeah, actually, I, I remember, and for years, I used to tell people this, and I didn't realize it, it's a reality, right, is that I'd be, you know, learning something in a webinar or whatever, and I'd finally say, like, all right, we need, my brain's full, like, I, we got to stop, because if we keep going, I'm going to be forgetting stuff. I can just tell when I'm when I'm at that point, point. Um, and that's one of those things, like, you need to, to realize eating, it's a, it's a, a what do you say, it's a, um, What's the thing for the long run? It's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Take your time, ease into it, keep learning, um, and uh, it's a much better way to go. The uh, second tip that I really, really, really like is that, hey, copy and pasting is your friend, right? Don't, don't get embarrassed or feel bad about borrowing other people's stuff. The vast, actually, honestly, the best programmers mostly copy. They don't write stuff from scratch, right? They're copying things that are already out there that are that do what they want. They might tweak them, right? Which is perfectly fine. But there's no reason to start from scratch on everything you do or to feel bad if you do copy something else that's out there. No, absolutely. Because yeah, copy and paste is your friend. It It's one of the things that you will see over and over uh, if you look online. Uh, most people or programmers in general will most likely joke in one way or another about Stack Overflow being a coder's best friend or whatever it might be. But that's because it's also a productivity tip. Why would you want to invent, um, you know, sliced bread again? If someone has already done it, they might have used hundreds and hundreds of hours on making the best piece of code out there. Sure, you can look it over, maybe you can tweak it, maybe you can't, but at least you would have saved a lot of time. Right, you're gonna cover the next one? Or... Yeah, I'd say the third one, yeah. don't aim for perfection. So version one is better than version none. <laughs> I've had that problem so many times over. I always wanna keep tweaking it just a little bit better just a little bit more. No, I'm not okay with it missing it that one time or this being weird or was it taking that long of time? Oh, but if I didn't make this better, it, it can actually end up uh, timing out before an action happens. <laughs> Again, yeah, but if the page actually takes more than five minutes to load, maybe, you shouldn't be doing it right now, right? It, it's like, okay, it's probably good enough for the most part. Yeah, I love the saying progression, not perfection, right? Keep, you know, keep work on it, make it better, but don't, don't try to make it perfect, right? And just get it done and move on, right? Move on to the next thing, uh, which was what I'll do now. Um, and don't feel inferior, right? When you start off, it, it's, it's really interesting. I'm listening to this amazing book um, and it's called Psycho Cybernet the new Psycho Cybernetics. And it talks about how people learn things. And often we'll start something and we, we start trying to learn it. And so it's something fairly complicated and we see other people doing it and it's a breeze to them. And they're like, well, why? Oh, God, I'm just dumb, right? They can get this. I can't get this. Well, you know what? That other person's probably been working in it for a couple of years or something, right? Or at least has been programming in other languages. There's no reason why you should feel inferior if you're not getting something. We all start from, you know, from the same place and we're all at different points and we have different experiences. Um, that's like for Jackie and I. Jackie's a much better programmer than I do, but I, it doesn't, I'm not insecure because of it, because 
him and I have different goals and tactics and what we're doing. And um, I'm a big practitioner of the, Hey, just, just use what's there, which we'll get to a point later. I don't want to give it away, but um, then Jackie will dive into it. Right. But he also is optimizing it for his purposes. But again, we just have different goals. Right. So yeah, don't, don't feel inferior that if you're having a hard time learning something and other people, it seems like it's super easy. Trust me at one point, it wasn't easy for them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So so you, you can put people on these pedestals if you want to, but often you'll find that uh, the way you're doing it works really, really well for your need or something else you can do actually set you apart from, from the ones that you're comparing to. So yeah, don't, don't feel inferior because one of the things that you do when you do your stuff um, probably outshines them anyway. So yeah, uh, I'll go on with the next one and that's, Nobody programs like you see instructional videos, you know, uh, Linda.com and stuff like that. It's it's someone who has been at it, who has perfected it, made it ready for showing. It's it's just there might be some people out there that do some of these things, but for the most part, these things are uh, shined up for showing, right? It's it's like having a script for a video. Uh, why would you just wing it when you're doing an instruction video like that? You'd of course have some kind of script. You will have written the code. You will make sure it's error free and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I would say. The um, you know, write the code, troubleshoot it, refactor. Right. That that's what most people do. Uh, but well, also the one that I don't think you mentioned, Jackie, was uh. Most videos you see, they're heavily edited. Like even the best programmers in the world, even when they're working with stuff they've already tested and everything, things still go sideways and they have to fix them. And then when they go to fix them, they can't find the error. Don't set that as your example of like, look, I'm not like these people because nobody is, right? It's so rare that something goes right, um, perfect. Um, and it's one of the things people the, the, in, in some of the Udemy courses that I'll have, I leave in my errors and, and some people complain about it. And my point is we all need to learn how to troubleshoot, right? And that's why I leave those in there is to show how to work through and solve problems. And it's such a critical thing. And I'll tell you what, the few like lynda.com courses where I was watching them um, and I would try to you know follow and learn and then something with my code would go wrong but I had no idea how to fix it because they never, nothing ever went wrong with theirs. And so it was, it was really frustrating for me. So anyway, that, that, that's my big one on that. Um, now the sixth point that I want to cover is that you should always be learning. Now this doesn't go against what we said earlier. Don't try to learn everything at once, but pick topics, right? Pick something, have a schedule, maybe once a week or it's every, once every other week, whatever your time you can afford, right? A lot it and have, Give it more than 20 minutes, right? What I would say is what would be great is maybe every two weeks, have a two hour chunk of time where you get to learn something that's enough time for you to dive into something and really have some good learnings from it. What um, my my buddy and I, we've been doing for years is we take codecations, right? We take generally like three to five days out of the year and we'll meet up together. And for 12 hour days, we, we program together and we learn together and that's what we do once a year. But I'm always learning and reading yeah, absolutely. Because again, as we had, you can see lots of videos where people are doing it flawlessly, but when they have learned it somehow. And if you don't take the time to learn, it's okay, as we talked about earlier, don't try to learn it all at one time uh, at once. And it's okay to go and copy paste stuff. But if you're doing these different types of things, you still, of course, need to keep learning if you want to uh, move along your skills so yeah keep keep at that part of it um, I'd also say you don't have and that's the next point you don't have to know the ins and outs of all the code that you use it, it it's okay to know most of it and of course your code shouldn't be doing any type of malicious stuff or stuff like that but in general if you can just skim and get a, a feeling for most of what the code is doing, you're, you're, you're pretty far along with, with what you're doing. And if it's the co go-to module or library or whatever, you probably don't need 
to read through all of it. Uh, if you just have a need for grabbing a screen resource or uh, you want to uh, do an API call or whatever, if someone has made a class or a module or whatever, uh, you can re reuse that. That's fair enough. Uh, if you then want to extend on it, want to improve on it, you think it's a bit too slow or whatever, but you have gotten that version one done, fair enough. Go on from there. Yeah, now Jackie, I want to I want to um, speak to this, especially with using you and I as an example on this, because I think it's a really good one, and I didn't mean it because because this is one of my my bullets I wrote in here, um, and I thought of you not in a bad way, but you will you often go in and dive in, and you will find someone's function, and you'll reverse engineer, not reverse engineer, but you'll basically dissect and do stuff, but you're doing that on one that you are trying to optimize for a certain very specific thing for your usage. Right. And that's a great point of like, for me, it's rare that I'm doing that. I just want to have a way to solve my problem and I'm, I'm good to go. Right. But in your case, often like the stuff you've, you've done on some things, a millisecond matters. And so you take, you take time to dive into it and find better ways to do it. So this is why it's, it's important to realize sometimes you do want to dive in and learn every ins and outs. And that's when you also, you have those longer times you talked about learning stuff, right? This is a great time for that. Other times, you know, especially when you, you got something that's due or your boss is asking for something, whatever, that's not the time to be diving completely into something that you don't need to know right then and there, right? And that's more how I do stuff. Um, and in the long run, it's, it's really helped Jackie out as far as being a programmer to, to be able to, he's a much better programmer than I am. At the same time for me, I get more things, I'm guessing, done, like delivered on different things because I don't peek into stuff, right? Um, and it's just, and there's no right and wrong answer, right? It just depends what your goals are. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, it's, it's a great one to, to keep in mind. You don't need to know every last part of it. Yep. The, um, and now the number eight was talking about um, taking breaks, both mental and physical breaks, right? And drinking, you can see, I don't know if Jackie's taking a drink yet, but we both have, you know, glasses of water here that we'll be sitting here, you know, stay, uh, you know, uh, hydrated, stay, you know, have also find the time of day that really works for you. But um, what I even do is, and thankfully, you know, I work from home, so it's easier, but I used to do this in corporate world too, was to take a nap, like at work, I would, I take a five to 10 minute nap at the most. And uh, it's really refreshing and I wake out of it and I'm, my subconscious actually, especially when I get stuck on something and I'm, I can't solve it and I'm hitting a, a, a block, I say, you know what, um, I, I outline in my brain what I'm trying to do. And then I say, I'm going to go take a nap. And usually my subconscious like works on it while I'm sleeping. And when I come out of it, I come out with an, an at least an idea of like, oh, what if I try this? And often it leads to the right solution. Yeah, I totally get this if you're stuck or anything like that. I, I'd say when, when I'm working on bigger projects and stuff like that, it will often be the thing in my head when I actually go to sleep. And I, I love this almost vivid uh, thinking close to, to dream state mm -hmm. where I'm thinking about this. It's, it's mentally relaxing kind of. But yeah, as you said yourself, even if you're stuck on something or if you have a new idea or whatever, um, sleeping on it, taking a break from it, uh, just making sure that you're mental and physically well actually helps a lot of these things. That's, that's absolutely true. You know, it, it's really interesting. It, it makes me wonder, I, like I said, I know, and a lot of people have talked about that. I know what I mentioned works, right? The taking of a nap and taking, you know, but I also know from talking to people, just taking a break, switching topics, you know, and then coming back, you can't keep working on something when you're really that stuck. You, your brain gets stuck in a certain way and, and you keep doing the same thing over and over and you can't read it, you know. Um, but when you take a break, you know, I don't know. This is my question, though, is, is it the actual taking of a break? And when I come back, my mind has stopped in that same process. And so it can kind of start up again and actually really redigest where I am. Or is it that your subconscious, while you weren't actually working on it, was actually working on it for you, right? Like, and I don't know if we can ever really answer that, but um, I do think there's a part of your brain that still works on things when you're not trying to work on them. And, and you'll get these flashes of insights, right? Of like, all of a sudden the answer comes in your head. Like I'm sure Jackie, you've had that happen where you're, you've stopped thinking about it. And later all of a sudden you're like, 
oh crap you right it just pops in your head and i believe that's your subconscious still processing things for you um and without you even trying yeah it would be weird if i'm i'm not sure because again we don't really know enough about consciousness and then unconsciousness and all that stuff but Stuff is most likely happening. Lots of stuff is happening in the brain all the time, right? Uh, you, most people have heard those. If humans could just use a hundred percent of the brain, blah blah blah. Right. But and it's it's been shown time and time again that yeah, we're we're using pretty much all of our brain all of the time, uh, in different ways. But it's being used. This one over here to move your finger, that one part over there to breathe, and that part over there to make sure that the liver is actually doing what the liver should be doing. So our brain is constantly working, even when we're sleeping, the patterns just change. So absolutely, all kinds of stuff is going on. I'd say after that one, taking on the next one, clearly identifying your goals and why, you know, piece of a code, pseudo code, whatever, um, however you want to do it so you know how to achieve it before you actually start the programming. I don't remember if I had it. Uh, people can probably not see it, but I'm actually showing something for the camera. This uh -huh. was just me uh, writing up a small piece of um, a markup for a GUI thing I was doing. So stuff like that, so you don't just um, have a mental image of it, but that you actually have a clear image of how you want to do stuff like that. And the stuff I had here wasn't really pseudo code. This was just a mock-up of how I wanted the GUI to look. But yeah, clearly identifying stuff like that can really help you because you, you won't get stuck. And if you're collaborating with people, right. this it gets even more important. That's for sure. Yeah, excellent points, Jackie. I, I'd even say it, um, you know, I start off with, with I just write comments, you know, I, I'll write comments um, with all the different things. And then, because also, you know, sometimes you're, you're starting this momentous task and let's say you're not collaborating with other people and it's it's like good lord where do i start right there's so many things to do well when you start and you write out the whole list it breaks it into these little you know parts now and then you can take those parts and break them if you need to and do sub parts right and you just keep drilling down and then you finally start writing some code and it's just easier your naming conventions and everything it's just so much easier to picture what you're doing um, yeah, and I think the like the image you showed there too, it's that's like the the framework kind of thing, right? You're laying it out. Now, when I used to do statistics, um, and I would get stuck on something, and people they're like, "Well, I, it's well, I didn't have the problem because this is what I did." But people will kind of be like, "I'm trying to figure, it, but I don't know how to do this." I'm like, "Draw it out." They're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Just draw. Just get a pen and paper and draw the graph that you're trying to create. Once you draw it out." then go figure out how to make that graph, right? But they were trying to, into the statistical program, move things around and build it that way. And I'm like, it wasn't coming out to, because they didn't have a clear picture of what they were trying to get to. And the second you draw it out and you see it, you're like, oh, it's easy, right? Like now I know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, just clearly having those clear goals uh, really, really helped. Um, okay, the last one here is, uh, this is such a critical one, right? There's, there's no right way slash one way to solve a problem, right? Especially in programming, there's just, there's always, you know, dozens of ways to, to do things, to tackle things in different ways. If you, uh, if you end up showing your code with someone else and they, you know, don't one again, don't take criticism from what they're saying. Just, you know, especially if they say, well, that's crap. My way is better. You, you know what? If you can understand your way and it works, I'd argue your way is better. Now, if you're doing stuff that takes millions or billions of, you know, rows of data or it's processing and you're trying to optimize, that's a different story, but that's rarely the case, right? Usually it's, you want to make sure that the solution you come up with makes sense to you, that you can edit it, that you can work in it, and that other people later can, can work with it, right? But there's so many ways to solve problems in programming. It's crazy. Yeah, there, there of course, there can be ways that are faster, the, the, that has less code or you can find all kinds of uh, arguments for doing it in another way, but it's not necessarily the right way because 
if the way that you have done it isn't errorsome, you know, where, where it would fail or crash or whatever, then your way of doing it is probably the right way for your need. So you can refactor it later or you can optimize it or whatever you can do all kinds of stuff. But if you're just trying to write a piece of code and make it solve whatever issue you have and it does that, why would that be the wrong way? Right, we, we have pushed calm with auto hotkey for many years, but in general, that's not necessarily the right way of doing it. It might be a more stable way, or it might be a more um, consistent way. There might be all kinds of arguments for why you would want to do that, but it's not necessarily the only right way of doing it. Which gets back to Jackie, and that's I think your underlying point there was, well, what are your goals, <laughs> right? Sometimes your goals are for having the, the, the smallest amount of memory usage. Right. Sometimes your goals are, for whatever reason, the code itself, the number of bytes and characters that the code itself takes up is smallest. Sometimes it's the um, fat, what runs fastest, right, takes up the least memory. Sometimes it's, uh, it's the easiest for programmers to come in, and especially not just you, but other programmers to come in and read after the fact, right? And I know, what, 10, 20 years ago, um, back when we were using, you know, the early versions of Windows and there was this memory kernel, there was something like it was, it was optimization was really critical because RAM was super expensive as hard drive space also was tiny. So there were a lot of other factors that were important. Nowadays, computers, you know, we have so much RAM and so much hard drive space. Those things, while if you're dealing with millions and millions of, you know, things you're processing, yeah, that can matter. But nowadays, to me, the human aspect is a much higher priority of what's important. Is it easy to read? Is it easy for other people to read? You know, to, um, and again, is it um, going to obviously have errors and, and whatnot? But troubleshooting, that can take up far more time than everything else, right? And it's a human's time that's the more expensive time. It's not your computer's time, generally Absolutely. Speaking. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I totally uh, give that one. Uh, human's time is the limited resource. No matter how we really want to put it, it's the one that's finite, right? Uh, we should probably, <laughs> if you want to go into all that kind of stuff, we probably shouldn't be using our time of uh, half of what we are actually using. <laughs> time on. But yeah. So true. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I hope, uh, I thought those, those were 10 really great points I wish I had known before we started, I started programming. Yeah, absolutely. I, I especially uh, loved uh the second one, copy and pasting, it, it just is your friend. And I don't know anybody who hasn't used it. Yeah, um, y'all listening, tell me in the comments, what, what's your favorite, right? Um, I, I don't know which one I would say is mine. Copy and paste your friend is definitely one that's up there. Um, although the version one is better than version none to me also because a lot of people want things to be perfect. And, and it, this is where when you're an entrepreneur and you're the one in charge, you have to realize you need to limit what how much time you put on stuff. And so that's an important one for me is making sure like I'll pay developers and they keep wanting to do stuff. And I'm like, it's, fine. you know, stop working on it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, awesome. Good that's talk, fine. man. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, bye.